then I get a call from uh, Ernie Ladd, and Ernie Ladd's like, uh, man, uh, Vince man wants to speak to you. And I was like, yeah, really? Uh, I didn't know. I didn't know nothing about WWF. I didn't know. You know, I just didn't care. I didn't keep up with that kind of stuff. Still, after all this time, it was never on your radar? Like, No, no. no? I, I was world champion. I didn't need, yeah, hey, I was world champion, baby. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I wasn't on, I, you know, I wasn't on my radar at all. You know, I was just, like I said, I was happy doing where I was at. I was, you know, having him fights every night with different guys. I love that. So but then Ernie calls me, you know, and says, uh, you know, Vince McMahon really wants to speak to you, you know. And I said, oh, okay. Well, I, I let it go for a couple, three weeks. Then finally, he got, finally, finally got me and said, you know, he really wants to speak to you. He wanted, you know, can I set it up? And I said, yeah, go ahead. Set up a telephone call. So just a few minutes later, Vince he calls me up, you know, and got his Vince McMahon voice, and you know, like uh, George, uh, uh, this is George, uh, this is me. He said, uh, "I sure would like to have a meeting with you. Is there any chance for you to be able to fly up here?" And I said, "Well, uh, I'm booked right now, you know, for the next few days. I mean, then I have a couple of days off." And he said, "Well, if you just give me the dates, so I'll fly you, fly you and your wife up here." And, I would love to have a meeting with you at the office. So we said it. We, it was set up. I flew up there. You know, like some guys said, they had tryouts or whatever. I, I didn't have nothing like that. I, I flew flew up there. They picked us up in a limousine, uh, took us to the, you know, headquarters. And I went in, had a meeting with Vince, you know, and he, he's like, you know, uh, uh, he introduced me to Pat Patterson. This is Pat Patterson, blah, blah, blah. And, then uh, he said, you know, I would like to, I'd like to have you as one of my wrestlers. And uh, we, he took me in his office and he goes, you know, I love that name, One Man Gang. I, I, I won't change that at all. I won't touch it, you know, which, of course, we saw that didn't last. <laughs> <laughs> but he said, I can see it on the marquee, One Man Gang, blah, 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 you know. And he says, you know uh, who our world champion is here is Hulk Hogan and I'm always looking for guys, you know, to come in and, and go against him for the world title. And he says, I believe you fit fit right in that uh, perfectly, you know. And he says, well, how much do you make for UWF, you know, down there? And I told him, I said, I make eh, 100000 which I wasn't. I wasn't making no 100000 but I told him 100000 And he goes, I guarantee you you'll make a lot more than that. And I, you know, I was like, mm, okay, I'm thinking in my head. <laughs> oh, yeah, and when I first got there, I had these gig marks all over my head. He saw that. He said, you won't have to worry about that no more. We don't do that here, you know. So nice. he said, well, what, what do you think? You know, he said, I'll give you an opportunity. I'm not going to make you any promises about anything, but I'll give you the opportunity. Uh, would you like to join the uh, World Wrestling Federation? And uh, I, I, said, I said, well, uh, yeah. I, sh I said, yeah, I shook his hand. I said, you bought yourself a wrestler. So I said, you bought yourself a wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> so he said, okay, go back and, you know, finish up, do what you got to do. So I went back. I told Bill, you know, and he told me to go. He said he had no, he had no hard feelings about it at all. And uh, ended up, I ended up having to drop the world title to Bubba Rogers, who later became Big Boss Man. Ain't that strange? Yeah. But, uh, I, you know, I called Vince about it. I said, Vince, they want me to drop the title, you know, to do all this. And he, uh, you want, what do you want me to do? He said, just do it. Do what they want you to do. Nobody nobody remember nothing. They don't care. Nobody remember. So I, I said, okay. So I dropped the title to him, you know, and finished up whatever few matches I had left over. And next thing I knew, I was on the big jet headed to New York City. You know, and the rest is uh, – Rest is history after that with the WWF. So you had it. I mean, all the other places you were saying, man, I can't believe I'm in the ring with this guy, this guy, this guy. What was it like then meeting Vince? I mean, was it still that unbelievable? It wasn't that big deal to me. I'll just no. be honest with you. It, I didn't even, to me, I didn't even realize who Vince McMahon was. I just be, I tell him how in the dark I was about business. I'm not a businessman. I just, you know, I don't care about what goes on behind the scenes. I don't know what's going on. You know, I, I just, I get my booking sheet, whatever, whatever town I was booked at, that's where I went to. I couldn't tell you nothing about nobody. So, you know, I, I understood he, you know, he ran the company or something, but I didn't really understand 
what he was or what went on or nothing about the company at all. So, you know, until I got there and understood what went on, it was just, uh, just, you know, a whole nother world. I didn't even understand, you know, once I got there, I was a whole nother whole nother world. I had to relearn basically. Big gold and a billfold. So swole that I can't get the shit closed. So I money fold and rubber band wrap.